what you want, when you want it, where you want it. This is The Mesh. Foot Candle Films. Film news and reviews from two guys who really like movies. This episode is brought to you by the Foot Candle Film Society. For a schedule of upcoming screenings and membership information, visit the Society's website at www.footcandle.org. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Foot Candle Films here on TheMesh.TV. My name is Alan Jackson. With me, as always, not across the table this time. I'm actually talking virtually with my co-host. Uh, it is Chris Fry. Chris, how are you doing? Uh, I'm doing well. I'm uh, excited to uh, talk to someone else besides someone in my immediate family. Um, of course, you know, I, I love my family, but being quarantined with them does have its pluses and minuses. 20. 24-7 can, can still be a little much, no matter what the case. But, uh, of course, as you probably are, are recognizing as you listen to this, we may sound a little different than normal. Uh, we are doing another quarantine edition of Foot Candle Films, both of us calling in from our respective home locations. and uh, But we are still committed to talking about films and reviewing films. And even though the movie theater business right now is pretty much non-existent on the theater side, we're at least still treated to some films that are coming available online. And that's what we'll be focusing our attention on today as we do review two new films that are both available online for your home viewing during these interesting times. Uh, we'll be having a couple movie reviews. We're going to do our some news, although I'll just go ahead and warn everybody in advance, not a whole lot of movie news to talk about simply because Every movie you are anticipating or under production has been halted or delayed or pushed back on a schedule, but there's still a few interesting things to note, and we'll talk about that when we get to our news section, and then we'll have our recommendations for the episode. Chris and I always like to give at least a recommendation of a film we think would be worth checking out on your own home time. Uh, now that everybody seems to have a little more of it than they maybe did a few weeks ago, that's a great time for catching up on some films or uh letting us help you with some recommendations of ones you may want to check out. Chris, we have two films we'll be reviewing, as I mentioned. Uh, both of them available online. Both are ones people can watch the minute they listen to this podcast. We'll be first discussing the film The Hunt, which has a little bit of an interesting backstory in terms of timing. It was initially supposed to have been out, I think, late or last year. Mm -hmm. Got delayed because of some of the content, uh, violent content of the film. And subject subject matter based on some uh, events that were happening in uh, in history at that time did get released, but didn't last in the theaters very long because they yanked it uh, when the theaters uh, shut down and made it available to rent on a first run basis. So we'll be discussing the hunt, and then we'll be moving on to a second review, which is a film that just went straight to online uh, delivery. It is a uh, We'll call it science fiction, fantasy, mind bender called Vivarium. So, Chris, are you ready to get started with our first review? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. First review is going to be the film The Hunt. <coughs> hey! What is happening? What is all of this? Did you see that article? Every year, these liberal elites kidnap a bunch of normal folks like us and hunt us for sport. The last I heard, free speech still exists. Don't First Amendment me. It wasn't real. Everybody get out of here! We were joking. There's been a killing spree. You gotta come here right now. You actually believed we were hunting human beings for sport. <laughs> but you are. We have an opportunity here to teach these people. These are not real people. They're actors. I'm playing an Arab refugee, but I identify as white. I think that's problematic too, in some way. You wanted it to be real, so you decided it was. What 
kind of sick people would even think of something like that? White people. We're the worst. Alan, as you alluded to in your intro, this film has had quite the bumpy ride making it to the big screen. It was originally scheduled for release in September of 2019. It was pulled by Universal after Dayton and El Paso shootings. Just prior to being pulled, the film had received interesting buzz, both positive and negative, from press screenings that it had because of political content. President Trump actually tweeted on August 9th, writing, the movie coming out is made in order to inflame and cause chaos. The film was finally released March 13th. Due to the coronavirus-related theater closings, it was digitally online just a week later, and that's how you and I have been able to watch it. Alan, was your experience with The Hunt that tells the story of 12 individuals rounded up and hunted for sport anywhere near the roller coaster ride that was this film's release schedule, or is that the only thing of note with this satire slash thriller slash action movie? Um, I, okay, I, I will say I think the film does have some elements that live up to the hype that it was garnering. I think there's some, I think the concepts of this film and I think the overall intention of the film is definitely uh, noteworthy and I think worthy of discussion. Uh, Unfortunately, I feel like its execution doesn't quite live up to its promise and doesn't quite live up to uh, the, the overall high concept that it tries to tout. Um, I can go into more details on that as we get in a little further, but I, I will say I generally had a decent time with this film. I didn't walk around hating it, but I also didn't feel like it was a, a complete winner. I, I will say the concept on its own, the concept of the film, and it is this just kind of a, as a quick little summary of the kind of the, generally the plot, I guess, you know, without giving away any spoilers in this film. Uh, you do follow initially onset of 12 strangers who all wake up in a clearing. They don't know where they are. Don't know how they got there. And then you start to learn that there's a dark internet conspiracy theory that has brought these people together. And now they're being hunted for, for sport. Now the film goes deeper than that, but uh, I guess my challenges and my problem with the film is that I love the setup and I love what they try to reveal and the twist that follow later in the film where you start to see there's maybe a little bit more to this story than, than what you were initially led to believe. But I just felt like the execution of it just was really flawed. I felt like that impact that some of these twists and turns and the bigger, higher concepts should have had could have been a lot uh, let better handled. And I just felt like it by the end, I, I felt like it was a little sloppy in the last uh, half of the film and just didn't deliver quite the payoff I was hoping for given the initial setup. So, with that being said, I, I'm mixed on the film. I will say I, it was a it was a good way to pass an hour and a half, but uh, I do feel like I could have gotten a lot more out of it given such a what I thought was a pretty great high concept to begin with. Chris, what's your what's your thoughts on it? Yeah, I think you know I, you're, I'm not sure what except for the actual ending of the film um, and maybe a little bit that's revealed there. I'm unsure as to far how much would actually be spoilers because I can't remember how much is actually kind of revealed in the trailer about what essentially is going on, but I think it's yeah. safe to say, because it kind of shows you in the opening minutes, kind of the theory behind it is there are the people that are rounded up are kind of lean towards the conservative spectrum of politics. And those that are hunting them are the liberal people that lean towards that end of the spectrum of politics. So it kind of sets up that dynamic that these people are going around hunting people for sport because they disagree with them politically. Um, like you said, Very interesting um, kind of concept for a film. And, you know, obviously, if you couldn't guess by the trailer, it is extremely violent. It was like if Quentin Quentin Tarantino would take on this type of stuff because kind of cartoonish violence at some point, like just, you know, ridiculous amounts of blood and sometimes gleefully done violence, especially very very gory. And uh, yes, but. Yeah, but it's reveling in it. It, oh, it yeah. knows what it's doing, and it's 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 not afraid to to go as deep as it goes on the violent spectrum. Right, it's totally not turning away. There's kind of a Hunger Games sequence at the very beginning when they kind of wake up in a clearing and all run for some weapons, and the outcome of that is you know probably exactly like what you'd expect. <laughs> um, so yeah, I was unsure. Like you know, the poster for this film says the most talked about the year of the movie is one that nobody's actually seen because that was kind of their promotional campaign 
before it was released in March. Um, I think the thing is, although I can see why some people hate this movie and would never want to give it a chance, because I understand it is, you know, ridiculously violent. I think there is a kernel of interesting, like, I guess, truth or entertainment value in the fact that, you know, people have these polarizing opinions and instead of trying to work something out, they just kind of go at one another. Um, so it is, it's an interesting satire, but I would agree that maybe the execution to kind of soften its message, I guess, in the end, maybe could have been handled better. Um, I will say too, that the director of this we've reviewed, I think we've reviewed, we've at least talked about another movie that he made compliance, which was a very Mm -hmm. interesting movie that, you know, basically it takes these, this idea of all these phone calls that were made to this restaurant, like making the employees do all these things with somebody who was basically, it was like a prank call, but they end up doing things that are just despicable. And at some point in the film, you're kind of put in the place of those people and you're like, well, I would never do something. I would never do something like what these people are doing. And then through the events of the film, you realize, wait a second, I shouldn't be judging these people because of what's going on. Like, and so with this film, you're kind of the same way you start off thinking, Oh, this is all ridiculous. And then, you know, you realize, okay, I see kind of a point that he's trying to go here for. So maybe not executed as well as it was done in that movie compliance, but yeah, no, I thought Compli- Compliance was a much better movie. And this one, this one, I'm just afraid that I think the, I think the overall impact of the message and, you know, you set it up pretty well. I think the trailers say the same thing you gave in your, your kind of your summary there. Uh, I will say there's some adjustments to the plot. Sure. Um, about, you know, two thirds of the way through where you start to maybe learn things are maybe a little different than what was initially led to believe. And it also does cause you to kind of question more whose side you're on right. to some degree. So I get what they're trying to do. And I guess that's the thing that's a little disappointing for me with this film is I totally get it. I get what they're trying to convey. I get what they're trying to share. Sure. And I love the fact that his films seem, seem to be something where, like you said, it's going to put the question on the viewer to say, what would you do in this situation or where, what side would you fall on? And you may think you're on one side, but could you honestly – not believe that maybe you're on the other side. And this film does a, tries to do that too. It's just not as effective. And I think it revels too much in the violence and the fight scenes and the gore. And it, it just doesn't ratchet down on that concept to really make this a really interesting film as it is. It loses the interest and it just becomes a, gore an fact. action thriller. <laughs> yeah. A gore fact, action yeah. thriller. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I will say some of the fight scenes I enjoyed. I actually think there's a there's a end fight scene in a kitchen that's yes. really fun, and I, you could tell the actors involved are just having a blast with it. Um, and they really ate it up, and just I thought both of them really really played that fight scene really well. So it's definitely entertaining. I just by that point I'd kind of given up on the premise and given up on the messaging of the film, and just said, all right, I'm just gonna. I'm just going to munch on my popcorn and just watch the fights. And, uh, you know, that's a shame because I think this film could have been a lot more. Well, I think, yeah, kind of what you're saying, uh, the fight scenes do kind of, you know, the the violence does tend to be kind of like a, like a sideshow type thing. And you kind of just tune it out after some point. But I agree that the end fight scene, they had kind of a climactic fight scene. That was amazing. Um, I thought that was really good. Really good. And I think, I and think it was the, fun too. I, mean, I just think, you know, it was just a, it was a little tongue in cheek. It was a little play off the, the tropes that we're normally seeing in these action movies where two people just are going at each other for, you know, a long extended period and uh, yeah, just kind of having fun with it. So well, I think, what did you think of the, uh, I, I'm, what did you think of the two actors The I, I'd say the two leads and, and by them it's Betty Gilpin. Um, and then you've got Hillary Swank, Betty Gilpin, uh, probably best known for Glow, the TV show on Netflix that she's been in for the last uh, couple seasons uh, or two or three seasons. And then Hilary Swank, obviously been around for quite a while, Oscar winner actress, uh, has not done as much lately in the last several years. So what do you think about those two and kind of the, the lead roles they performed? Yeah, I was I was impressed with uh, Betty Gilpin. Um, I Like you mentioned, I'd only seen her in Glow. So mm-hmm. um, I wasn't really aware of her. Another thing, she, she's had small roles, but I wasn't really aware of her. And um, I didn't think this was a very, like, you know, pretty much every character I feel like in Glow is kind of 
you know, larger than life because they're like this big personality and it's very, I don't know, a very specific type of character they're doing. And here in the hunt, I mean, she's playing a certain type of role as well, but I don't know. I felt like it was more generic and I found her, I don't know. I think she is kind of one of the characters you end up kind of pulling for, I guess, if you could say that. Um, but just, I, I thought she did a really good job. I was kind of surprised, you know, it's a very, a very different type of role I felt like in a way for her um even though I haven't seen that many roles but it was just it was very opposite of glow like this or at least I thought it was um so I thought she did a really good job um Hilary Swank um kind of the same type thing except ranked or ramped up to like 11 um because yeah I'm familiar with her from like Boys Don't Cry or Million Dollar Baby both of which she won Academy Awards for um I don't believe I've ever actually ever seen her in something that could be considered a a horror comedy thriller or whatever. Like, cause there are funny elements in this too, that they use for like shock value. And she, like you had mentioned, she seems to be having a great time. <laughs> and uh, well, I thought it yeah, was, it, I thought it was cool. I, this year. I've never, I don't think I've ever seen her or can't recall her being in anything so pulpy and so uh, genre driven film. Right. And I felt like she was really eating it up. I, I think she plays evil pretty, pretty well. Um, I think she does a good job with that. Uh, and, and what could be seen by the end of the film is a somewhat of a, com- a more complex role than maybe it's led on to believe initially. Um, Betty Gilpin, I did like, and I think she's definitely got the makings for an action hero. I know that's what they're trying to probably position her as. Um, she just has the look and, and I think she can give off the intensity to be a really great action hero. I, I just, there's a few times I'm, I was really questioning. I'm not, 